all right what is going on welcome back to the channel all right special video for you all here today we are starting from the park position and we're looking to actually get out of this spot and then make a right at the stop sign right here so let's see now that we've got a clearing fsd figured it out perfectly exited exactly when i needed it to um it just got right in front of the car behind me just perfect stop sign right here we're looking to make a right so let's see how we do here creeping up a little bit because there's no stop sign for the traffic in front of me and voila just like that it did a really good job about making the right and here we go so we are here in arlington testing out fsd our goal is actually to try to make it back towards the tyson's area this is like hov time right now i'm by myself in the car so i can't actually get on to 66 at this time i think it's like 6 30 i think that it clears up then anyone with one person in the car is allowed to drive on that road but if you're from this area you know that that's limited on weekdays so i'm actually looking to take the back way and uh, get back onto Georgetown Pike and try to avoid all that um, HOV stuff. So here we go, we're looking to make a right here. FSD recognizing the traffic in front of me and doing a great job by seeing this car coming and stopped actually, it was like halfway gonna go and then it stopped and now it sees the clear path and it proceeds, proceeded perfectly. Really nice job there and it, it's like, sometimes it will second guess itself as you saw it pushed itself up a little bit and then it saw you know once it had the visibility because it was creeping then it saw that it was a car coming and it stopped so gotta have to keep in mind um that fsd does forward think a little bit you kind of have to give it the benefit of the doubt um just to see what it's capable of then you know how it will operate in certain scenarios but then you also realize there's certain things that could trigger it in the wrong way um, a great way to tell is what shows up on your visualization here. If it is true to your vector space, which is in front of you, which you're looking at, then you can expect it to operate correctly. But if for some reason something's blocking and it's not showing correctly on your visualization here, then you should expect the car to make a mistake, which is not typical. But once in a while, some things will just not show up correctly for whatever reason and um, you just kind of have to beware. But then again, you know, everything is is um, supervised right now. It's your job to pay attention to what the car is doing because um, we are not at that point where we can just let it go and it's gonna make sure to not do any mistakes. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's gotten really good from the point where I started using it to where it's at today. I consider this self-driving. Um, because I can make it from the end of my driveway to the parking lot without doing anything but pulling down this lever once to activate full self-driving and then it does all the driving for me. Um, and it even switches lanes, takes the turns you know, at the right speed. Um, it keeps everything in mind as far as the laws go so it's not making any you know, sporadic moves that's gonna get you pulled over or anything like that. And uh, overall, if you use it, I don't think there's really a right or wrong way to use FSD. There's more like a safe or unsafe way to use it. And as long as you use it safely, then you can find that it may enhance your day. Um, it can kind of clear up your thoughts as far as what you use to drive. I mean, you don't have to use those that brain energy to drive anymore. You can just kind of plan out your day ahead of time and kind of go about it like that. All right, this guy getting quite a bit of the panhandling going on here in this area too, noticing it, you know, increasing quite a bit. Ooh, a little brake lock going on over there. I'm not sure what happened. Um, anyways, here we go with the left turn. FSD figuring that out perfectly. I'm not sure why it locked brakes there for a second and then figured it out and let go. But took that turn really nicely and uh, smooth, no issues whatsoever. And yeah, this is you know prime time traffic. It's 
and uh, yeah, FSDs figuring out. I mean, this could be your commute to and from work. All you got to do really is supervise the car, and it does the rest for you. So keep in mind that supervision comes with a huge asterisk. You know, it doesn't mean you're in the back seat. Doesn't mean you stop paying attention to the car. Um, you kind of just put yourself, you know, in the driver's seat, literally, and just think. You know, if, if you feel like the car is going to make a bad move, you can take over. And to take over, all you do is you tap the brake, or you pull the steering wheel, or you can just tap up. Whereas that just put it in reverse. If you're in FSD, it will just click it out of FSD. And to engage, all you do is tap it down once or twice, depending on what you put in the in the settings. Um, they just switched it over to tap down once, but before it used to be two, two taps. Uh, but yeah, uh, once you get used to it with one, um, you don't want to go back then. Uh, eventually, I know the new car has got just a button for FSD, so they're even getting rid of the gear stocks. That's a thing of the past now, too. And I used to think, like, how will I get used to that? Being able to just, you know, I'm so used to just hitting the gear stock down now. But I actually stopped by the Tesla service center in Tyson's a couple weeks ago. And I spent some time in the new Model 3. I sat in it and I played around with it. I pressed all the buttons in there to see what it felt like. And uh, the first thing I did was to, to play around with the indicator to see how that felt. And it's, it's, it's like compared to your arm going like this or just simply just pressing a button like that it is a lot more simple and I think you know it does take some retraining your brain but if you just go like maybe two three weeks with driving the car it then becomes habit so then you know moving forward it's gonna be pretty standard to you um, when you first get a Tesla the first change is your wipers you know, wipers are on the other side with my old car and yeah, everything flipped. So once you get used to that, it's sad because they've changed it so many times since I've had the car. It's like they're always looking to improve, you know, the user experience. It's funny, at work, I'm, I'm always helping out some of my coworkers with some of the new versions of, let's say, Outlook or Teams. And, you know, they're telling me, oh, I remember this used to be here, this used to be here. And then all of a sudden, you know, Microsoft puts a new update out, everyone gets a new outlook, and then things that you remember with your emails all of a sudden has changed. And I, I always think to myself, imagine that happening to you in your car. You know, some people can't even deal with that on their phones or on their laptop, but I've come to learn that once you get used to it, it actually is a better change. And when it comes to software, don't get too settled with anything because software is a live, living, breathing system that's constantly changing. It's constantly updating and improving. It's kind of like, if you remember, and this may date me a little bit, but MySpace, you know, what it looked like to begin with. And then before, you know, Facebook got started, you know how it changed and if you remember the way Facebook looked when it first launched and the way it looks today I'm not even on Facebook so I don't know what it looks like today but you can just think too from you know Twitter to where it started with X where it's at today you know this just changed so much if you remember the way that the you know homepage looked back in 2009 even 2011 it is quite different today so it's kind of a rule of thumb is just don't get too comfortable when it comes to software um, because there's lots of hands on it and lots of eyes on it there's gonna be lots of changes always added to it so here we go we are actually trying to make it around the toll road like I was talking about with the HOV restrictions they do here so let's see how the car does now overall there hasn't been any takeovers in this video FSD did all the driving without me having to do anything but commentating and yapping along while it's doing its thing so here we go we're gonna try to make this right here let me know your guys thoughts in the comments below um, have you tried FSD yet 
is this something that you will never sit behind the wheel of or even get in a car that is automatically driving let me know what you think because I, I know a lot of people still have that uh, mentality today some people will not get in the car that's automatically being driven for whatever reason they just don't trust it um, and some people can't live without it so we're, we're kind of at an interesting cusp there with, when it comes to people's opinion on it there's the exit for 66 which we're completely avoiding because that would have been illegal for me to get on at this time by myself it's hov only so yeah hit that like button if you enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos like this Thanks again for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.